Human beings were running for hundreds of thousands of years before we ever invented a shoe. So some people think that's how we should still be running today. Barefoot. Well, the recent evidence in the last 10 years or so is showing that um, the shoes are not doing what we thought they were doing. There is no evidence that shoes prevent injuries. There's no evidence that shoes improve performance. But the other argument is that barefoot running has no evidence either. We're not used to walking around barefoot. We're certainly not used to running around barefoot. The prime thing is, in my research, <clears throat> is that barefoot running forces you to change the things that you normally do. So what does happen when you go barefoot? So bottom up well, sand. I'm going to be the guinea pig and do some running in the lab to find out. Bit. Oh. Okay, Reuben, I'm going to put a sensor on your skin. Like that. So what are we going to be measuring here? Okay, Reuben, so we're measuring uh, muscle activity from your lower leg. To do that, we've got two sensors. We've also got a couple of sensors on your feet. Now, these sensors are purely there to record when your foot hits the ground and when you push off during running. So let's go for a run. Ready, go. OK, Reuben, we've got enough data from running in the shoes. I'll get you to take your shoes off now and we'll do some barefoot running. So, George, I'm covered in dots. What's next? Well, we've put a series of um, reflective markers on your legs, Reuben, because we want to capture movement of your joints around your knee and your ankle okay. and see whether there's differences between when you're running barefoot to when you're running in the shoes. Okay, so I've got to go running again. You do. Excellent. You just see his toe, his left foot was right on that. I feel like I've run a marathon already. And I still have to do this test barefoot. So we've got the results from the uh, motion analysis. And um, this first video that you can see is you running in your shoes, so you're shod. And you'll note that as you make contact with the ground, you can see that you're landing on your heel. And then when we switch across to you when you're barefoot running, um, you can clearly see that you're no longer striking with your heel, you're now landing with your forefoot. Also of interest, if we switch across to the second screen, is we're now measuring ground reaction force, and whilst in shoes, we're seeing a greater initial impact force. When you're running barefoot, that impact force is lessened. Yeah, so when you land on your heel, you hit the ground hard. Yeah. The reason why people change is because mainly landing on your heel barefoot is painful. So people then change to a forefoot. Well, when you change to a forefoot, your stride length gets reduced significantly. The further consequence of that is we've shown in our laboratory that if you reduce your stride length, your metabolic cost of running goes up. The whole thing, it just escalates up from a very, very minor change. So then what happened in the next part of the experiment? Yeah, so happening? moving on to your, your muscle activity. The two muscles that we tested were the, the calf muscle and the muscle on the front of your leg. Now if we look at the calf muscle first, you can see that when you're running barefoot, your calf muscle is working harder and it's actually coming on slightly earlier. So there's a bit of pre-activation compared to running in, a, in, the, in the jogging shoe, in the running shoe that you've got here. Yeah, right, so this is interesting because I could feel when I'm running without shoes, my calf muscle is pulling on the back of my heel harder. And if we look at the, the muscle on the front of your leg, we can see that when you're running barefoot, there's actually a decrease in activity of this particular muscle relative to running in a, in a running shoe. I guess this interesting point, Ruben, is on all three screens we're looking at kinematical motion, force and impact and muscle activity 
that you're quite different in all three areas. So when you're changing from shoes to barefoot, you can expect to use different muscles and different structures. What we've shown is that transition time is probably you're at the greatest risk of being injured. What happens to people who transition from shoes to barefoot running, they change their footfall pattern. And in fact, when you ran, you changed. And footfall patterns, like a heel-toe pattern, those are very, very, very deeply ingrained in your motor program. It's hard to change that. And so when you're forced to change that, I think that there's a greater possibility for certain types of injuries. So if you are thinking of ditching your shoes and running barefoot, remember, you'll be using your muscles differently and it's a big change. So, take it slow.